What's up, fight fans from around the world? Welcome back to the War Room. I am your fight goddess, Chris Baldwin, and I'm here with my boy, Mr. Eddie Goldman. He is an award-winning sports journalist and my sister, Melissa Smith. She is a women's boxing historian, and we got two very special people in the house today. We want to welcome Terry Moss from Atlanta, Georgia. That's yeah. right, Terry Moss from Atlanta, Georgia, and Avril, am I saying that right, Avril Matthew? From Australia. That's right. She is. Uh, now, thank you guys both for being here. Terry is a former professional boxer induct inducted into the Women's Boxing Hall of Fame in 2015. She owns a boxing gym called the Buckhead Fight Club. I like that. And now promoting fights in Atlanta, Georgia with her company. Is that BFC? The Last Round Promotions? Right. right. And, and our girl Avril here, uh, Mathis, is an Australian and Swiss professional boxer, model, and fitness expert, and she's fighting on the undercard of the Summer Bash happening in Atlanta, Georgia on June 11th. Now, you know, we're going to kick this off, Terry, to you because there aren't very many women promoters in this business, and you're right. a professional fighter, and you just like, boom, said, let's get into the promotions game. So tell us how that came about. Tell us right. about this card and how you got Averill in uh, on this in this fight game here. On well, sure. Um, uh, let me just start by saying that this is a co-promotion with BFC The Last Round and the Prestige Boxing Advisory Group. So uh, my partner in this is John Beninati. He's, uh, you know, he's worked with Don King, Al Heyman, all those guys, Mayweather. He's, he, he matched fights for Mike Tyson. I mean, Christy Martin, he's been around forever. So he's a really good connection with me. I've been promoting shows since like, uh, I think I started, first one was 2010. So it's been I a minute. Know. Yeah, we've done a lot. I've done probably 70, 70 shows since then. So quite an extensive, you know, background in that. And he's been in boxing for since before I was born. So right on. <laughs> so between the two of us, yeah, we've got a pretty good, uh, pretty good thing we're we're trying to kick off here. So um we're excited. And we got Avril. So how good is that? Right, right. Avril, <laughs> how now tell us how you got into boxing and you went from modeling to boxing or from modeling to to to, to, to boxing to modeling, which happened first. Uh, I kind of always have done both at the same time, actually. Um, so when I was a teenager, I started doing Muay Thai. And, um, you know, as teenagers do, was very inconsistent with it. But in my 20s, I started to become a little more obsessed and was going to Thailand all the, the time to train. And at one point, I threw a kick. And when I put my foot back on the ground, I broke my foot. It was like the weirdest injury. But I think because it was such a strange injury I thought it's no big deal and I just kept like persisting on it and didn't ever wear a moon boot like the doctor said I didn't like take the rest that I was supposed to or anything like that and so during that time while I couldn't throw kicks or knees because I couldn't put the foot back on the ground um, and my foot was like huge and swollen and black and blue and whatever I was like okay, like, uh, I guess I'm just boxing for now then. Like I couldn't <laughs> run, I couldn't jump, nothing. And so that was how I started boxing. And I couldn't walk properly for nine months, but after six months, I managed to have my first amateur fight um, because I just was like, it was a, you know, with Muay Thai, I never had any interest in fighting. It was more just like a fitness thing and it right. made you feel invincible and whatever, like kicking and kicking and going, create, you know, as hard as you can. But with boxing, it's a lot more like defense and movement and there's a lot more to it. And that was when I became obsessed and I wanted to fight because I was like, all right, like someone throw a punch at me. I need to like check that I'm doing it right and moving and making them miss. It's not just all about attacking. And uh, yes, yeah, so once I had that first amateur fight, I remember I was like halfway through the third round before my brain finally kicked in. And I was like, oh, what do I know about boxing? <laughs> the whole thing was just like a huge adrenaline rush and I loved wow. it. It was so much fun. And um, I just wanted to, at first, my goal was to get through a fight, being able to like focus from start to finish without just being, you know, in that mode of like craziness. Um, but yeah, I just, and I just kept going with it because I, just loved it um, and now you're seven and oh yeah nice. <laughs> as a pro nice as so a pro it just, kind of, it just kind of kept going and going like when I was in Australia I was married we owned gym together and it was sort of like that was my life you know it was like and I was very happy doing that 
not a boxing gym, just a regular gym, but we put a boxing ring in it. Of course. Of course. <laughs> and uh, when I split from my ex, I was like, okay, like I can be anywhere I want in the world. I can do anything I want with my life. I don't need to be here doing this as much as I love it. Like what else is out there for me? And I had been spending a lot of time in America and Mexico, especially Vegas um, with modeling. And I, in that time had met people in the media that once they found out I was a boxer, they was like, oh, have you been to this gym, this gym and set up, you know, arrangements for me to go and train at different gym, you know, all these exclusive gyms, like the Mayweather gym and the top ranked gym and all those gyms that like, you know, you have to know somebody to kind of go there. And in that, so Chris Algieri, who's actually helping coach me in this camp that I'm in right now, because my coach is in Australia. I met him in Vegas in when he was in training camp to fight Pacquiao. And we just met at like a meet and greet. And then we got along and I got along with the whole camp. So they said I could hang out and like watch the training session, whatever, of course, like one of the best in the world at my sport I want to. And uh, yeah, we just like got along and stayed in touch. And then um, a couple of years later, we ran into each other in the casino in Vegas, like just, you know, after I'd split from my ex and I was kind of like in this, oh, what am I going to do? Um, and I kind I knew I wanted to like take boxing seriously and just see how far I could go with it. Because in Australia, it's like, boxing is not a viable career. Um, like George Cambosos, who recently won uh, all the belts at Lightweight, except for one that he's about to fight for, uh, June 5th, I think. Um, he uh, He's doing well, but he's like one of the first Australian boxers to really like financially do well out of boxing. All the other boxers have other jobs, even the best male boxers in Australia. It's just not a viable career. We don't have the right. population of people to support the sport. So I was like, okay, if I want to take this seriously, like Australia is not the place for me. I need to get my ass over to America. And then when I met Chris randomly in Vegas on that trip, he invited me to Boca and uh, he introduced me to um, a, the coach that I was training with in Miami. And it just, the re- it just kind of like went on from there. And I was like, all right, I'm, I'm coming. I'm, I'm coming Here to America. Comes. And uh, yeah, I just figured it out, managed to get a visa for modeling, which was amazing. And uh, yeah, just been boxing and modeling my way to where I am now. <laughs> so. are, are, you, are you planning on staying permanently in the United States or have you figured that out at this point? Well, I just got um, my visa just got approved again. I've been here six years so far. I just got my visa approved for another five. So, so far, that's my plan. Um, That's great. But yeah, we'll see, see what happens in life and where it takes me. So uh, one thing we noticed is that in your last fight in July, in uh, September in Dubai, you fought six by three. Is that correct? Three minute rounds? Uh, I don't think so. I think it was oh, two no? minutes. It was two because it on the box record was listed as three minutes. So that's why we oh, wanted really? to ask you. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> this is news to me. And, I and, and for this fight, um, right. it's, 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 mm-hmm. it's listed as three minute rounds. So. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that. Well, that's we I, need to know. <laughs> <laughs> I probably need to know that so I can let the commission know. We'll probably talk after to see what you prefer to do so um oh okay so you haven't fought professionally at three minute rounds yet not as far as i know i mean i think i remember i had one fight where i think first round was three minutes because they didn't switch the timer but then they figured it out and they they switched it to two minutes after that um but other than that i have always fought two minutes yeah yeah Yeah. okay I, i typically train for three unless i have a fight coming up then i start training for two you know, right. just get the condition Why? Of the fight. Because in between fights, I want to focus more on conditioning and mm-hmm. I might not be training as hard. I might be focusing more on technical stuff. So to have that extra time is beneficial. Um, but when I have a fight coming up to a two minute round is very different to a three minute round because you can sprint for two minutes. You can't sprint for three minutes. So, you know, in a two minute round, it's a lot more faster pace, um, a lot more action. You know, you have to, right. it's like more, it's like training for a sprint race compared to training for a middle right. distance. Race. So you're actually, when you're doing the training, you're actually like now in, in camp, you're, you're sparring at two minutes. Two minutes. Yeah. Well, which do you prefer? Because there's a debate, different people have different opinions, different sanctioning bodies have different opinions. If it were up to you, which would it be two minutes or three, three minutes? minutes? 
three minutes for sure yeah because you can just do more in three minutes and as well like a six round i mean think of it when you first start you start with four rounds four by two minute rounds amateur fights are longer than that in amateurs it's three by three minutes that's mm -hmm. nine minutes of action compared to eight minutes you know mm -hmm. and it's just you know it's so easy to get draws when you have so little time to display whatever you need to to the judges um which i don't like drawers i had one of them it was very deflating right. after all the work <laughs> i mean it's better than a loss i guess but still it's like it sucks i've never understood why you know rounds aren't like the the bouts aren't like odd numbers like you know right. seven rounds or 13 rounds or 11 <laughs> rounds you know so there, there's a clear-cut decision it yeah, used to be the championship fights with 15 with rounds 15. And yeah too many people yeah, i remember those people. days yeah. Terry, did you have you fought three minute rounds in your career? Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> 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 go. Yeah. I may have had it. I may have had a fight. It. I may have had one fight. Not that it yeah. went went on. I mean, back then it didn't even go on record if you did. But yeah, I think exactly. I had one fight yeah. at three minutes. It was a six round fight. Um, yeah. but, but it was a mistake. Maybe I think about again by the commission. You know that that sometimes happens. But uh, I agree with you. I mean, the, the two minute round is a, is a much different pace and you can't get as much done. I mean, there's uh, I think, you know, a lot of people, there's a lot of speculation on women's boxing about two minute or three minute rounds. You know, my person, you know, I've been doing this a long time. My opinion is two minute rounds is usually why women's fights are so exciting. And they're so action packed. Three minute rounds will give you more time to do things, but it's going to slow the pace. So you know you have to think about what you want. You know, it's, um, I like I like to see the fast pace of a woman's fight, but I also enjoy you know the long haul of a of a three minute fight. You know, so that you can see more more right. technical, just like she said, more technical savvy in the ring than just you know get in there bang it out. You have so little time in two minutes. It's really, you're, you're you're literally on the stool half as long as you're fighting. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's crazy. So, you know, it doesn't give you a lot of time to, to get anything yeah. done. But uh, on the flip side, you know, it, it causes a pretty intense fight. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, one of those people that thinks those really beginner guys and those four round fights are the most fun to watch, even though they're sloppy, but they're just fighting with all their heart. And they sure are. That can be, sometimes can be Absolutely. the most entertaining of all the fights, you know, though we all love the big fights, but you know, um, you know, there's a lot to be, a lot to be bad balance there and you know women's boxing I think in the beginning you know uh, like when I was fighting I mean first of all nobody got paid and then you know it, it, when you did it was peanuts and it just there was no competition out there so you know the the fights were sloppy nobody would air them on television you know the skill level was you know sub adequate you know what I mean there just wasn't a lot you know you were fighting I mean women went straight into the pros back then because there were no amateurs you know you could you, at least in the pros you'd be likely to get a fight so I don't know if Christy Martin ever had any amateur fights or Layla Ali I don't think none of us did. no no so, no not back then you just went pro I mean that's what you did and you know, you, you just go in there and get get the, get a fight. But you know, if you imagine if you've never been in the ring, I remember my my pro debut. Uh, uh, my my trainer said, well, "Just tell me you had ten Muay Thai fights." I'm like, "Okay, I'll tell my ten Muay Thai." <laughs> but you could tell when I got in that ring that I never threw right. you know, rings. So, uh, you know, yeah. but, but you know, that's that's what we did. We had to learn in the ring. We you know, it was the only opportunity we had. So there wasn't a lot of sparring. There were definitely not a lot of trainers that wanted to train you. You know, I mean. It was a different world back then than it is now, but you know, I'm just glad to see it changing. And you know, hoorah for you know what happened at Madison Square Garden and right. now Avril. I mean, she's she's coming up, you know, a, a pretty big promoter. And you know, just it's good to see women getting signed and you know, money getting behind them mm -hmm. and, and all that stuff. It's just a, it's a different world. It's still not it's not it's still pennies on the dollar for men's boxing, right. but you know, it's definitely on the climb. So. You know, I don't know well, the it, name, but but at least it's it's going a certain direction. So yeah, and there's you know two Australian women are getting quite a lot of uh, coverage. Sky Nicholson, for one, she was on the Taylor Serrano card, uh -huh. and Ebony Bridges is fighting uh, out of UK, and she just won a belt. So well, you know, a good um, friend Misha Mertz has a gym over there, and uh, yeah, she does. Right, and uh, well, I, I can't remember the name of that other woman's champion that came out of there right around the time. Misha was coming around. Uh, the, there's, there's a WBC champion over there. I mean, they, you know, not a lot of money again, but um, there, there, there have been some girls through, through the times. But 
you know, even uh, like Melissa, our good friend, uh, Misha, you know, she she was fighting when she had to come to the States just because it wasn't legal to fight there. Yeah, Pretty it much was. I like what Katie Taylor did. It was not legal for It was not legal. Um, yeah. And, and uh, she came to New York. She fought out of Gleason's gym for a while. Right, and, right. and yeah, she was she's <laughs> awesome. But that she was she was the first national champion, you know, one right. of the first national champions. And in, at, at that time, you could fight in Melbourne, but you couldn't fight in Sydney. It was illegal right. in Sydney for a very long time, yeah. much longer than the rest of Australia. Right, right. So that's amazing. Yeah. So, Avril, you used to fight, uh, you used to be signed by MTK? Or what promoter yeah. did you used to be signed by? Well, MTK are not a promoter in the US because there's a law that you can't be both a promoter and a management. Right. Um, so I was managed by MTK okay. in the US. Um, but I'm sure you heard what happened. Oh, we've been talking about that, girl. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're talking yeah. about that we next know. week, too. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, the, you know, another good thing that, um, you know, it's good that you can still get on. You know, I was, I was talking to John about it. And I said, wow, you know, considering what's happened, it's good that you have a fight. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's at least yeah. it puts you in an awkward position, but it's good that you can still come and get a fight. And, right. you still know, come and get a fight in the United there. States. I mean, so it's, it's interesting. I mean, at least you've had the experience in Dubai. Um, then you have another U.S. fight and then see where it goes from here, especially if you get the win. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm grateful for the experience. That's for sure. Yeah. And yeah, John's been very, very helpful, very in touch throughout the whole way. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. of course, it's good to have a manager to do all these things for you. But, you know, when you're dealing with someone that's so easy to deal with, you know, and like on top mm -hmm. of things, then right. it's, it's a nice experience. Yeah. Right. And I guess you're, yeah, you're along with a lot of other fighters who are scrambling to find yeah. new representation yeah. 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 Um, yeah. because of the situation with MTK Global. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, some big fighters like, you know, Chantel Cameron and Savannah Marshall, who are champions, and they're, they're in the same, Everybody. on the bicycle trying to find something. Everybody. Yeah, yeah, there are a lot of us, a lot. Yeah. They had over 100 fighters. That's a huge oh, roster. Yeah. yeah. Huge. Yeah. That's amazing. So look, yeah. Eddie, you got anything else uh, for these ladies here? Well, I, I just want to know from Avril. I, wa I watched one of your fights, um, the one that was, uh, um, what was the opponent's name? Not your last fight. I couldn't couldn't find that one, but uh, the previous fight. That the Mexican girl. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. What do you feel? Uh, uh, that you uh, uh, Trejo? What do you feel that you have to work on? You, you, I, I was surprised that the scores were as close as they were, you know, watching the video. I thought you did much better than winning uh, four rounds to two. But but what do you feel that you have to work on? Because that fight, you, you were much taller and bigger. You fought, you know, you just out fought her. You fought on the outside. You had better hand speed. Uh, you know, her, that opponent was just very limited in, in what she could do. But what do you feel that you have to do to work on to get to the next level? So the thing about her and actually a lot of my opponents uh, is that I'm the tall girl. So typically I'm fighting girls shorter than me um, in the weight class. How tall so are you? Was, I'm five, seven and a half. So for the weight class, I'm quite tall. Mm -hmm. um, I've never even fought anyone close to my height, but she was by far the shortest. Normally they're around like five, four, five, five, but she was like five one or something. So oh, wow. she was tiny. And, and she fought top. small too. She yes, that crouch. was the thing. On top of that, her style was she would bend down literally and her head would be at my knees. Like, how do you throw <laughs> a punch from there? But so, you know, it was a it was a good experience because it opened my eyes to like a new challenge because I'm sure I'm not she's not gonna be the last one that right. I get like that either. So that was cool. But um, one thing I've been working on a lot is not backing out tall because that was something that I would do in that fight is I was like okay she's down there and so to when she would come at me I would like well, I was dropping my hands a little bit as well she got me a lot with I think it was like a left hook um but as I would come out I would come out tall because I was like oh she can't reach me but she'd be down here and she'd just be like <laughs> launch up and over and like somehow land this punch from nowhere so the right hand. 
Yeah. So I've been working on coming out like, you know, in a better position, more uh, grounded in my feet, um, taking more angles rather than going straight back. Um, because yeah, when you fight against or even spar against a really much shorter person, sometimes for me anyway, I get into this bad habit of thinking like, oh, they can't touch me. And so I'll just like back straight out and up tall. Um, so yeah, I've been training myself out of that habit for months, ever since that fight, actually. <laughs> All right, collecting um, bad habits. Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course. And just, you know, keeping my elbows tight because, um, you know, the body's right at a good spot for them. Keeping my elbows tight and my defense tight, my hands up, especially when I get tired in those ladder rounds. Um, you know, just the, the little technical things that you when you watch your own fight back, you're super critical of everything that you saw wrong um but yeah I think I used my distance pretty well with her um and uh I, I landed a few good body shots with her as well when I saw her punches coming I was able to slip and get to her body nicely um but sometimes I smothered myself a little bit as well um I'd sort of come in and I'd get too close which was to her advantage um so yeah I've just been working on those things right on now, now this fight on June 11 is there going to be a video or streaming of this fight? The one we just talked about that I watched the video on YouTube, but it was it just looked like somebody at ringside with a, yeah. with a phone or something. And I was oh. getting seasick. Because of that. It <laughs> I had a friend shaking. of mine film it for me because I didn't know if there was going to be any live streaming or any video of the fight. And I like to have the video, at least for myself, you know, so. Yeah, just so, so this, this event will be broadcast live. Um, trying to think of the name of this company. I'm looking it up here. Um, let's see, I can find this for you. But we, we, um, one way you can also follow is if you go to Buckhead Fight Club on Instagram or Facebook, we'll be posting a lot of the links and things you need for the tickets and, and for the broadcasting. And we'll be doing a bit of that mark, marketing there. But uh, I'll get the name of the company here before we go and send that to you. But it's going to be a, 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 night, a web broadcast that does very nice broadcast. So, okay. um, excellent. I'll get that to you here. Put it on Twitter too. That's like yeah, Twitter. Uh, Buckhead Fight Club's on Twitter. It's at Buckhead FC for Fight Club uh, right. on Twitter. And then you got uh, Instagram and Facebook as well. Yeah, because boxing really Twitter cool. is, is huge. Yeah, you know, I, I see love that. boxing Twitter. Yeah, yeah, I see, Avril, you have a huge following on Instagram, but on, on Twitter, which is most of your content seems to be flow through from the Instagram, but boxing Twitter is really awesome. Yeah, I don't uh, use Twitter because when it first came out, you could only have like 140 characters. Yeah, it's yeah, still like it's, that. And it's not really a thing where you post pictures and I was like, what do I write? What? Yeah. But, but it, it's good think, for the boxing thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I used to get on there and if there was a fight on, I'd get on there just to like talk. Oh yeah, live tweet. That's what fight, we do, yeah. we live tweet. Yeah. And now yeah. I like to just focus on the fight and watch. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'll Terry, watch. Terry, so wait, the name of your promotions company, is it Buck? It's, it's a C for Buckhead Fight Club, the okay. last round. And then, but Prestige uh, Boxing Advisory Group, it's a partnership. So by okay, all, okay, got you. don't forget John, uh, John Beninati, like I said, um, we're we're partnering together on this event. Um, yeah, we're really excited. The the web address for the promotion is it's boxing dot uh, it's bxngtv.com. Boxingtv.com. Right. And it might be boxing, B O X B B what? B X. Yes, B X. Yeah. I think it I don't know if they got that right or not. I'm looking on some of the broad, uh, the the stories that they've done on it. But yeah, oh. either that is boxing. Let me take a quick peek. I should have been prepared for you guys. I apologize. That's okay. That's all right. We're, we got here. We're war room here. We right. just want to make sure that goes on. right. Like we want to make sure that everybody gets the right right link and they can right. get tickets. They right. can watch, yeah, watch your card and watch April. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be a great broadcast. So these are guys are really top top broadcasters. So and they're right. um, also you know I'm gonna be doing one of my corporate fight night shows in October. We'll be broadcasting these guys too. So oh, awesome. they, they do really good work. You guys will enjoy the people. I want to so, see Meta versus Google. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Hey, that's both, one of my both. biggest shows. It's, it's a big one, so I'm excited about that. They should both lose. <laughs> right. We hate them all. We hate them all. <laughs> yeah. All right. So look, uh, right. Melissa, you got anything else for uh, Avery no, or just, Terry? You no, know, wish, just wishing you the best of luck and uh, in your camp. Hope it goes well and hope you get a, a good opponent. Um, and and so knock her ass out. Get to the next <laughs> level and and. You know, join your your Australian uh, 
boxing pals who are making a name for themselves in women's boxing right now. That'd be that's great. right. That's right. So look, folks, that's all the time we have for you guys. I want to thank Terry and thank Avril for coming in and sharing your uh, the this new show that you guys got going down on June 11th. Oh you guys call. make it's June 11th, right? Yes, June 11th. All right, get your tickets. You fo follow Avril and Terry on Instagram because they don't like Twitter. All right, but I like Twitter. <laughs> I like Twitter. <laughs> but Eddie, tell the people where they can find you, brother. Well, on Twitter at NHB News, <laughs> and you can you I closed down my Instagram. It's a he long hates story. Instagram. And and you can <laughs> follow EddieGoldman.com and my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Eddie Goldman. I'm looking at a, a there's a new social network site that it doesn't have any sports on it, but you might want to check out called Common Ground Social. Only it's brand new. So you could find me following the fights usually uh, and other things on on Twitter at NHB News. So follow and follow you back. Right on. Melissa, let everybody know where they can find you, baby. Well, yeah, I'm at Girl Boxing now on Twitter and on Instagram. Yes. And I have my website, girlboxing.org. And um, thank you. Thank you both for coming on the show with us. That's right. Avril, you want to give a shout out to anybody and tell people where they can find you? Um, <laughs> <to> my right? <laughs> um, I'm on Instagram at Avril Mathy. I'm on all the, uh, all the platforms at Avril Mathy, but Instagram is the one I'm most active on. All right, cool. All right, Terry, let everybody know where they can find you. Yeah. Buckhead fight. Well, personally, team Moss the boss on Instagram, I Terry like Moss, Facebook, but Buckhead fight club again, or Buckhead FC on Twitter. Uh, you can find us and find all the stuff on the shows and all the promotions and especially this one. So right <laughs> on. Yeah, so right. Should, should we do an Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi? <laughs> Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. But look, folks, before you guys, before we let you go, you need to smash that like button. Follow us. I'm on Twitter at Angry Afro Radio because I am that angry black woman. And follow me on, on Instagram at Fight Goddess Fitness. Dot com. Oh, no, that's just Fight Goddess Fitness. Okay, but I do have FightGoddessFitness.com. You guys want to check out my app, FightGoddessFitness.com. All right, that's all the time we have for you guys yeah. today. It's been real. Peace, love, and push-ups. <laughs>